Welcome back to Red Card. And joining us right now, live from CBC Sports, their soccer analyst, and I consider him a friend, Nigel Reed. Nigel, welcome to Red Card, my friend. Hello, Anthony. Uh, happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well, my friend, and Happy New Year to the city of Toronto and <laughs> TFC fans. Let me tell you, Nigel, I'm born and raised in this city. I have never, ever, ever experienced a press conference like this today. The emotion. Uh, the, the feeling from all sorts of supporters and just regular media people was something that I've never experienced before. Talk about it. Yeah, a bit of a media circus because the fans were there as well. But when you've got something big to celebrate, well, you want to celebrate in style. And Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment have never been shy about making a big noise about uh, big signings. And uh, these are these are two big signings. Uh, uh, and obviously, they these are the two players around which the uh, Toronto FC of 2014 and years to come uh, will be based, or so they hope. One to score goals, one to uh, you know get from box to box to shield the back four, and also to go forward as well. So yeah, great atmosphere, and let's hope that that uh, that good feeling continues into the season. It's obviously going to sell some tickets for them, um, but uh, you know, there's uh, as Tim Lewicki said himself, nothing's been won yet. Uh, they have won the race to sign Defoe and Bradley, and that's no mean feat in my book. And Nigel, you followed Tottenham for years. You know the media back home in England. They are cutthroat. I've been reading a lot of different uh, newspapers, been listening to a lot of people. They think that this move by Jermaine Defoe is basically a retirement move. He won't get a sniff to England's World Cup squad. I got to disagree. Boy, oh boy, I'm really disappointed in some of the comments of them talking about MLS. You and I know MLS. It is not Premiership. It's not City A, but it's not as bad as they make it out to be as well. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of ignorance as far as that's concerned. I would agree with you as far as that's concerned, Anthony. Uh, it's a tough physical league. It's played in the summer uh, in, in high heat, high humidity. There's a lot of traveling involved. Uh, and I have to say that uh, I think... Uh, the European players coming here, and we've seen it with players like Marco De Vallo, we've seen it with Kenny Miller, with many others. We often don't see the best of them uh, for their first year that they're here, and there's a reason for that. Uh, you know, players tend to think that, well, you can go anywhere and, and play anywhere. I'd like to think that Jermaine Defoe and Michael Bradley, well, he's played here before, of course, because he is a, an American, but I'd like to think Defoe has done a little bit of due diligence uh, about uh, the, the differing conditions that he'll find when he comes back uh, in early March to, to, to play because it's not the same sort of game. Uh, as far as the, the British press is concerned, uh, they are, uh, as you say, somewhat cutthroat, somewhat dismissive. Uh, of MLS. Uh, it's not EPL quality, of course. Uh, but uh, Defoe has made a decision uh, based on uh, obviously financial uh, situation, but also uh, on uh, his, uh, his footballing philosophy. He made a point of talking about the fact that he'd spoken to David Beckham, who of course was the pioneer in terms of those Europeans back in 2007. And we all remember uh, you know, the, the the, uh, the raised eyebrows uh, and the, the open mouth in surprise when Beckham announced he was leaving Real Madrid and, uh, and, and coming to, to, to MLS. Uh, and it's a lifestyle move as well for these players. Uh, a lot of these players vacation in North America and so on and so forth. So uh, it, it's a great lifestyle for them. Uh, and I certainly hope that uh, Defoe uh, enjoys his time in North America and scores as many goals as he has uh, back in England in the EPL. What I love about both of these signings, listening to Defoe and Bradley today, both of them said, uh, Nigel, that they hate to lose in training, even a scrimmage. They hate... Uh, when they lose a regular season game, they want perfection as best as they can get it. They are true competitors through and through. I love to hear this from both. Well, they are competitors, and as such, they have to be leaders as well. Defoe, of course, uh, will answer one question, and that is uh, the problem that Toronto FC has had in, uh, in front of goal for 
for many years. He is a, an instinctive, quick poacher. He's got a, he's got two good feet, and he's the sort of player who will finish off chances uh, when they come along. Uh, Bradley, for my money, has to be the leader on this team. He is that anchor in midfield. We've seen it uh, for the U.S. national team. We'll see it again uh, at the World Cup in in, in Brazil. He is uh, that that uh, no nonsense player in midfield. Good engine will get forward when he gets the opportunity. He scores the odd goal as well, uh, but uh, but most importantly, uh, will provide that that steadying influence uh, in midfield, that direction in midfield to keep the uh, the team going forward. Uh, and let's not forget that these are players who ha- have over many years, Defoe in particular, and Bradley, I mean, he's been around as a professional since he was 16. Uh, so he's now 26. These are players who have earned the respect, not only of the fans, but more importantly, I think, of their opponents uh, and their teammates. So, you know, uh, when Bradley turns up in a TFC uh, jersey in midfield, uh, in March and April, uh, you know, other, other midfielders from other teams will know they're in for for a tough game because Bradley isn't the sort of player that pulls out of challenges. He's got a that never say die attitude, and that that certainly is one of the just one of the key ingredients that Toronto FC needs and hopes that it now has uh, in Michael Bradley. Nigel, since day one, I think you and I can both agree this franchise has been a disaster, a laughing stock of MLS. But today, I myself even found that I could find no negatives in these signings whatsoever. And I find it that it was at the right time to rejuvenate the fan base, to basically rescue this franchise from going into the dumpers and never getting back to the first year of sellout crowd after sellout crowd. To me, the question is this. Uh, to you, Nigel, you followed the game a long time. I believe there's one guy and one guy only that is on the hot seat right now, and I believe he's got five to ten games. That's head coach Ryan Nelson. Do you believe if they start out slow, Nelson will be gone? Yeah, without question, he has now the tools at his disposal. Uh, there are other issues to be addressed. And before we get on to Nelson, uh, I would just uh, talk, talk a little bit about the back four. We've talked about Bradley. We've talked about Defoe. We know Gilberto, so perhaps the X Factor from Brazil, is here. If he can do what Felipe has done in Montreal or Camillo in, in Vancouver, then he will be a good signing. Uh, at, the sentimental favourite, Dwayne Di Rosario. Yes, he's 35, but I think he's coming back for the right reasons. I think he's got a couple of years left in him, and I think that he can still uh, contribute. Uh, I still think there are problems uh, at the back, and I hope that Nelson does something to address that in the coming weeks, because otherwise they're still going to concede goals. As far as Nelson himself is concerned, well, you're right. Uh, now he has no excuse. Uh, he has uh, certainly with Defoe uh, engineered uh, this move because they were teammates together at Spurs. Uh, and he will know that. Uh, I mean, uh, any coach in, in any professional sport knows what the rules are. And the rules, Anthony, are simple. If you win more than you lose, then you keep your job. Any other equation and, you know, your, your seat's going to be burning. One question that was asked of Tim Laiwiki today, are you done? And he said no. And also listening and reading between the lines, it looks like he will be dipping back in to the AS Roma uh, club for possibly a lower key player. I believe, uh, Nigel, that they will possibly go after the veteran Italian national goalie Morgan DeSantis. Your thoughts on that? Well, I uh, certainly think that, as I mentioned a moment ago, the defence, and when I talk about that, the defence, you know, I'm talking about the back five, not just the back four. So you're talking about the, the four across the back plus the goalkeeper. Uh, if you can get an experienced keeper in as well, uh, be it on loan, uh, then I think that is uh, to the credit of TFC. And that's uh, uh, something that's uh, somewhat flown under the radar today, the fact that uh, Toronto FC have now uh, begun to build something that should have happened years ago, but I guess better late than never. Than never. They've begun to build uh, solid, uh, ongoing, long-term relationships with Tottenham and with, with AS Roma. So young players from the TFC Academy hopefully will have the opportunity to uh, experience either England or Italy or both. And, you know, in a reciprocal way, you know, young players or perhaps 
more experienced players on, on loan deals will be able to come the other way. So from that point of view, uh, certainly it gives Toronto FC another avenue to investigate into deepening their squad in months and years to come. As we close it out, Nigel, I want your thoughts on uh, the Red Patch Boys, the supporters of this team, TFC. I said since day one, these are the best fans in MLS. I, I, I got to tell you, it was incredible being down there today. The singing, the atmosphere. I mean, Larry Tannenbaum, one of the owners of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, was just in awe. You saw all sorts of other people in attendance. Masai Ujiri of the Raptors, the GM. I mean, it was something of a celebrity status. And the Red Patch Boys singing and singing away. Safe to say, Nigel, these are the best fans in MLS, what they've been through. Well, they certainly uh, have uh, patience uh, in abundance, and uh, we all know uh, the, the, the stats don't lie that the, the crowds have been dwindling o over the uh, last uh, four or, or five years since since that original honeymoon. Perhaps this is the second honeymoon for Toronto FC, and certainly if Defoe and Bradley and the other new signings can turn this franchise into a winning unit, and let's face it, that's really all that matters. Uh, if Bradley and Defoe come uh, and play every week and Toronto FC still doesn't win, then uh, the, the honeymoon, the second honeymoon, will be very short-lived. But uh, the fans have been magnificent. Uh, we all remember them from you know the first two or three years, and, and there's still plenty of them just, just desperate, just desperate to see Toronto FC be competitive, uh, be a winning team. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, not start, start making predictions about MLS Cup in 2014. But uh, certainly now they have uh, some new heroes uh, and uh, some fresh expectation, I think, uh, for the season to come, Anthony. Nigel, you've been magnificent to join us here on Red Card. Keep up the great work at CBC Sports as their soccer analyst. What an exciting year, Nigel. The World Cup, MLS, all sorts of good things. Keep up the great work. And again, we thank you so much for joining us, Nigel. Always a pleasure, Anthony. Have a good night. One of the best. Nigel Reed of CBC Sports. Love talking to Nigel. What a day it has been in the city of Toronto. We will talk more uh, with uh, people in regards to the situation that is taking place at TFC with Vito Caressa. He is the president of AS Roma Supporters Club here in Ontario in the city of Toronto. We'll get his thoughts on this big-time signing, Michael Bradley, that came out of nowhere. i got to be honest. I, I consider myself pretty well-tuned in Italy, and I've got my sources. No one, I mean no one, saw this coming whatsoever. We heard about Gilardino. We knew that that was in the mix until apparently head coach Ryan Nelson uh, wanted Jermaine Defoe much, much more over a Gilardino, and he got that, and now he's going to live and die by that decision because I'm pretty sure he's only got five to ten games. And if they're only at 500, boy, oh boy, I wouldn't want to be him. I'm pretty sure that Tim Laiwiki has already the coach that he wants in place if things don't go all right. We will take a quick commercial break. Coming back, as I said, you can join us. Phone lines are open at one 5880 And the question is simply this. Is this got you rejuvenated? Has this got you excited? Will TFC make it into the playoffs for the first time? In their history. You could tweet me at Forto Terra as well. And as I said, in about 10, 12 minutes' time, we'll talk with Vito Caressa. He is AS Roma Supporters Club, and we'll get his thoughts on the signing of Michael Bradley. Back in a couple minutes here on Red Card. <music> 